On the previous episode of my hitchhiking journey from Mexico to Colombia, I arrived in Honduras and joined up with another group of travellers. We ended up accidentally hitchhiking across the whole country in one day and wild camping in a national park. If you're interested in seeing more of my videos, please press the subscribe button. Hitchhiking alone as a young woman may not be the safest or most sensible thing to do, but I'm a strong believer that if you trust your own intuition, more often than not, it is most probable that you will stay out of trouble. Something that I've noticed in society is that instead of being taught how to trust ourselves, we are simply taught not to trust other people. This video is a short story of how I trusted strangers in every way that we are always taught not to do, and how we shouldn't feel guilty at people's generosity. And I'm in Lari to the border. We picked up another hitchhiker. Yo voy a la frontera. The lady we just picked up is a 40 year old local woman who's just hitchhiking because she wants to get to the next village. And this is something I want to share because it's about the normalizing of hitchhiking and how even though this is a dangerous country because it's so normalized and because everyone does it I think it is actually safer to do hitchhiking in a country like this uh -huh. than it is in a country in Europe yeah. for example generally really it's such a great thing and people are just so terrified of it and it's just gone so out of fashion and I think that that it's so sad that that's happened <laughs> Got the pre-border heartbeat as well. I got into Nicaragua without any problems and with the help of the police on the border, I found a lorry going in the direction of my workaway almost instantly. The policeman asked me if I was married. I said no. He laughed and said, don't tell the driver that. After four hours of driving, my driver apologised and said I had to get out, as he couldn't drive anymore. There were huge piles of bricks for construction blocking the whole road. I thanked the driver and got out, feeling slightly guilty that he had taken me all this way and it was now impossible for him to move forward, let alone turn around. A good job my house is small enough to fit on my back, I thought, and continued the journey on foot. I'm in a bit of a situation where I chose the shorter route on the map but I didn't realise that there's like so many roadworks and no cars are coming through and it's I am in the absolute middle of nowhere so I'm just walking Hola, buenos dias I have my tent um yeah, I'm like hours away from the next village walking. I don't know about driving, but no cars are coming through, so I really have no idea. Yeah, and it's raining. Bye. See. Where does the see. <laughs> I've been rescued by a motorbike, and I still have no idea where I'm going, but at least I'm not walking. On the motorbike, we were only able to travel downhill as there was no petrol left in the tank. At the bottom of the hill, I thanked the driver once again and continued walking for a few hours. I had no idea where I was going or where I would sleep, but I was pretty content with that. So here's what happened next. <laughs> My name is <laughs> Hola! So I'm in Nicaragua as you already know and I got a bit stuck on the road because it was raining. What is, what is right here? And as I got completely stuck and didn't know what to do because I was in the middle of nowhere and it was about to get dark, this lovely lady hmm. who's a bit shy <laughs> asked me what on earth I was doing and I said I had no idea and she's now invited me to sleep in her house. I was still walking as the sun started to set and it suddenly occurred to me that I should probably start looking for a place to camp before it got dark. In the exact same moment, a voice called out to me, Stop! Stop! What are you doing here? Just walking, I replied. 
Sarah instantly invited me to dinner and to stay the night with her family. And I've had dinner cooked for me. And I have got you in the Give me answers. So we just made my bed, which is like this. It's got a mosquito net that rolls up like a hammock, and then they like put it down over the bed for protection. Yeah, I just want to say, as usual, I'm just blown away by the people's kindness. And in the very moment that I was thinking, oh God, I don't know where I'm going to stay. I don't know what I'm going to do. I was kind of enjoying myself. I was thinking I'm just going to keep walking until it gets dark and camp somewhere. Um, but then this lady just calls out to me on the street and says, hey, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. And then she said, like, yeah, you can come back to my house. You can come stay with my family. And she's cooked me dinner. And yeah, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Look. Cringe. Sarah said I was welcome to stay for as long as I wanted and seemed pretty surprised when I told her the next day that I was leaving. However, there was something about this place that settled me. I felt so comfortable there. In many hosts' houses, I feel I have to be falsely polite or can't make myself 100% comfortable. Maybe I still have the mainstream idea subconsciously drilled into my head that no one will give you something just to be kind. They always want something. And that true kindness doesn't exist. But what I think these people truly want is nothing more than the gift of giving. As Eduardo said in my El Salvador video, giving is a matter of wanting to do it, not because of having. You give because you really want to not because you have something. So I'm now trying to leave the village again, it's the next day, and there's like not really any cars, um, apart from taxis, that was a taxi. Um, everyone either gets on the bus or uses a motorbike, so I'm gonna get the bus to where I'm trying to get to, and it's about three hours and it's less than one pound, so I'm happy with that. I just need to remember where I'm going, I think it's here. Subscribe to see my next episode where I hitchhike to the biggest lake in Central America in the middle of Nicaragua and stay on Ometepe Island, an island shaped like an infinity sign that's landmass is made up of two volcanoes right in the center of the lake.